In New York City, Mayor Eric Adams has touted the success of a pilot program pairing MTA police officers with mental health professionals in an effort to make the subway systems safer. The Subway Co-Response Outreach Teams, or SCOUT, program focuses on getting New Yorkers with severe mental illness connected to services and supportive housing. Since the program launched last fall, the SCOUT team has moved nearly 100 individuals out of the subway system and into care. So for more on this and other strategies the city has introduced, I want to uh, bring in uh, CBS News New York reporter Elijah Westbrook. Elijah, good to see you. Um, so let's talk about this. Uh, how effective is the SCOUT program um, when it comes to lowering crime? Is it able to connect people in need to long-term care? And, and sort of what are some of the challenges? Well, Emery, uh, good morning. Good to see you as well. You know, I can tell you the New York City Police Department and the Metropolitan Transportation Authority, of course, we know it as the MTA, uh, have been really keeping a close eye on this newer program since its launch last fall. So the latest data as of this reporting is showing us that the scout teams, they've been able to persuade at least 99 people to accept shelter. Uh, 26 people voluntarily accepted uh, getting evaluated at the hospital contrary to 24 people who were involuntarily taken to the hospital for psychiatric assessments. So for now, transit officials and police are really seeing this as a success. Uh, in fact, the chairman and CEO of the MTA went on the record at a recent board meeting to say that the work is costly, but, quote, worth it even if uh, just a few hundred people get into treatment. Now, the second part of your question, Emery, when it comes to crime, uh, remains a bit unclear in terms of the correlation between the two. Uh, however, we do know overall crime is decreasing in the city subway system. Uh, just last month, the mayor touted the fact that crime had dropped more than 26 percent from the same time, uh, same time period last year. Wow. OK, that's that is all good news. Um, New York City is also going to soon be piloting new technology designed to detect uh, firearms carried by travelers on the subway. How does that, that work? That's correct, Amory. So it's called the Weapons Detection Program. It's a portable scanner, so one that you may see when you go to, let's say, a sporting event or a concert, where you walk through a detector and it's able to quickly scan uh, a person's body and determine if they have a weapon on them. Now, this includes things like guns, knives, uh, razors, and other sharp objects. That machine, we're told, is connected to a computer system, which is overseen by, of course, transit police who are standing at that particular station. Uh, we're also told by the NYPD that the machines will be placed at select subway stations during a 90-day period. Officials we talk to say they hope the machines will help deter random acts of violence that give this perception that subways are unsafe. So, you know, when I asked you about the challenges that some of these programs may face, what I was thinking about was, you know, those in need need to be willing to go. And you did yeah. have, you know, a handful of people who were involuntarily brought to hospitals. But people can say no. Um, exactly. And I'm sure there are some people who are concerned about, you know, this this kind of the police involvement, whether or not there's an infringement on personal rights or privacy. Yeah, you know, and it certainly appears that way, Emery, for the most part, that these programs are more based on voluntary compliance. But on the flip side of that, there are commuters and groups out there here in New York who are sounding the alarm on privacy issues, uh, particularly when it comes to the weapons detectors. Uh, the Legal Aid Society, for example, uh, right here in the city, had put out a statement that I would like to read in part, and we have it right here. Uh, it says that these scanners will create significant inconvenience, uh, adding congestion and delays to an already overburdened system uh, does go on to say even worse that they are an unjustified invasion of privacy and put people's lives at risk from the panic that an inevitable false alarm would induce end quote there so you know Amory it does seem some folks are split over what these new programs could do and only time will tell how effective uh, they are in combating crime indeed uh, Elijah Westbrook thank you thank you